Lone Ruin is yet another case of new action roguelike titles that the industry has been offering us in the recent times. Set on a group of magical ruins with a color palette that mixes between shades of pink, purple and blue, the main premise of this title is to find an ancient power while you go exploring arenas full of enemies. In fact, this is all about the narrative because it's pretty much non-existent. But anyways, it offers to the player some cutscenes where he is tasked with venturing into the magical ruins to find the magical power found in the last level. It just sets the tone for the entire vibrant yet repetitive pixel art environment. The colors used are comfortable and don't tire the eyes too much, however, sometimes it's somewhat complicated to decode where the enemy's attacks are or even the enemies. And like the narrative, the gameplay is quite complete and the main focus of the development. The attention to replayability inherent to new runs and magical powers that the character can enjoy is undoubtedly where all the fun of this title is found. Did I mention finger guns? Powers like Fireball, Curtains of Ice Spikes, among others, are part of an interesting range of different combinations that leave open a whole strategy that can be outlined between runs by choosing different power-ups. As in titles like Aedas, there's no way that I cannot talk about this game. As soon as you finish an arena, it is possible to choose one of two doors, each one referring to an upgrade of magic skill, the possibility of acquiring a new magic skill, money and or passive skills that help the player in their demand. As in all roguelikes, that means that you will lose all the power-ups that you previously picked up. Each run is different adventure, where a small adjustment to the approach to the enemies make all the difference and make the learning curve more interesting. There are two game modes, the mode that follows the storyline, although almost non-existent like I mentioned before, and where it's also possible to have encounters against bosses. And the survival mode, where the premise will be to defeat waves of enemies that get stronger as time goes by until the clock hits zero minutes. Both modes have online leaderboards and it's always possible to compare scores with your friends, which turns things a little bit more competitive. But here perhaps it's where lie the Achilles tendon of Lone Ruin, its durability. Although it featured the survival modes, the story mode ends up quite abruptly with only 3 boss fights and scarce variety of enemies. It took me around 30 minutes to reach the credits on medium difficult, but not on stream because I failed miserably, but I survived the wave mode live on Twitch. By far I consider myself a skilled player, even though roguelikes are in the warm corner of my heart. So a so-called average player won't have any problem doing such a feat either. Something that it's really possible to improve with some updates, who knows in the future, and end up with a lot of variety of enemies, bosses and a little bit more variety in terms of maps. Lone Ruin is fun for short game session, as it's short even for its own sake, and mixed with the lack of content it makes for a combination that leaves a little bit to desire. The experience is somehow saved by the fun loop, accompanied by a soundtrack marked by beats that stick on your head.